I'd like to call the meeting to order the Board of Leavenworth County Commissioners on our special meeting. I'd like to invite everyone to stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, I'm sorry we started without it. Is Jeff here? Yeah, he was here. Yeah. Okay. I was just looking at the clock. I'm sorry, Jeff. You're tardy. I was on the phone with you. Okay. You were really on the phone. Uh, yeah, yeah okay. imagine that. All right. Well, I'd like to start uh, off with a moment of silence, and I think we all know what we need to be praying for. Start with roll call. Mike Stevens here. Chad Chimke here. Doug Smith is present. Vicki Collison here. And Jeff Colerson here now. For the record, all <laughs> five commissioners are present. Uh, we're going to skip. Uh, we're not going to have public comment today. We're just going to move on into administrative business. Let's start with Mr. Lawfrey. Well, given that this is uh, this meeting is called specifically f to uh, discuss uh, the coronavirus and some of our. Um, plans of actions going forward. Um, I think it's probably appropriate that uh, Mr. Miller, the county health officer, uh, conduct, be probably the, the primary speaker during the meeting. However, I do have a couple of things that I want to propose to the commission. I think they would be good practice for us to consider. Um, because of the limitations that came out from the CDC and the president's office uh, just yesterday, uh, limiting gatherings to no more than 10, and to for the next yesterday was the next 15 days I guess today would be the next 14 days to try to limit at all if at all possible the amount of interaction that you have and one of the given some of the things we have coming up I'd like the board to consider canceling all public hearings uh, that we have scheduled at this time that would take us into May before we would have any other ones that gives us a good 45 days for public hearings but because we have to have during public hearing you have to have some form of interaction um, and our inability to be able to provide that with the potential of exceeding the 10 limitation, I'd like to cancel the public hearings from for now and in April. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that we would like to talk about, and a lot of the cities around us have already done, a lot of the counties are doing, and that is to um, limit or uh, potentially even uh, ban public access to county facilities unless it's... Um, something that would be statutorily required, like maybe over at the Justice Center for uh, court. But for our buildings to um, not to close the building, but to ban public access to the building, which would mean for the public meetings that we have to have, they would be virtual, like uh, we're on YouTube right now. We would continue to be on YouTube, which makes them available to the public, but it would limit uh, public interaction. So those are the two primary things. Um, that I would like to discuss with you um, best practice I think it might be a good idea for the Commission to consider limiting those who are in attendance during meetings so that two of you maybe dial in so if for some reason we had any kind of a exposure that um, we wouldn't have all the commissioners exposed at the same time one of the things we've recommended to our staff is that they platoon where possible if they have staff where they are especially if they have interaction with the public so that only half are exposed at any given time and I think it would be maybe good if the board could also set that um, kind of follow our own guidelines and, and right maybe just have two of you dial in at least or maybe alternate every other meeting for the next couple of meetings at least but okay. for 14 days um, close the county offices to the public and um, try to limit your access of or your exposure to the maximum amount and cancel our public hearings those are the main things I'd like to talk about well does this still fall underneath the motion we made to authorize yourself and mr. Miller and, uh, it does Kulzinski yeah do it does it with with the exception of the, the public hearings I think that needs to be a board action okay. uh, because of the nature of it 
the as far as staff and closing I think that mr. Miller and I have that ability to do that but again okay. just wanted to bring it up today um, okay because of what it is yeah. um, and then Jamie will have some other stuff that he wants to add as well okay Please. so you'll uh, make a rotation chart for us well, I'm I'm the, I'm with the the single one of us that's in the high risk category, according to the. Mm, I believe there's a couple of people that's under 55. Well, I'm just. But then it said other countries. So if y'all want me to stay home, I mean, I can phone in. It's it. That's fine. If one if fine. somebody wants to volunteer, we can do that. Otherwise, I can create a rotational chart, and um, so that we don't have more than three in the. In here at any given time, and we and you can still dial in. Obviously, we can set that up. Right. Yeah, we have the technology to do it. I might as well do it. Are we thinking just two weeks? Uh, at least for the next couple of weeks. For that, that might be longer. Um, you know, the it just depends on how things fall out. I think that while I agree with that, I do think having people on the phone uh, does. If you get into real public discussion of issues which I think will probably be pretty limited on the next couple weeks. Yeah. When we are really talking about issues, it does help to have face-to-face -face interaction. That's true. But uh, it, it does, but right now this is extraordinary circumstances, so I think you have to just get by with what you have. Um, obviously, it's the board decision. Uh, as elected officials, we cannot ban you from the courthouse. If you show up, you show up, but I'm just encouraging that you take that into consideration that we are um, setting some standards and that you lead by example. And well, and that was why I said that as, as the commissioner that's over 60 that I would be willing to set the example by staying at home and calling in for the meetings instead of okay. insisting on being in the rotation. Sure. So. That works. And if you all want to... I'm happy to do either. So. If you all want to call in, we can make that work too. If nobody wants to be here, we'll make that work. <laughs> I don't think that's the case. Why don't you build a schedule you can put uh, Vicky consistently and then you can rotate out others? Right. Then okay. just kind of that rotate works. the others. All right. okay. Like I said, I'd, I'd already planned to be here tomorrow and then that's it. And then uh, if I need to come in to do something, I'll do it on Saturday or Sunday. So when nobody's yeah. around. Yeah. I think, I think uh, you know, coming into the office where we have the room and you guys each have your own office is one thing, but well, um, obviously limiting your exposures I, as much as possible is good. So, so uh, we're going to set that for the, at least the next two weeks? Is that what we're saying? Yes, Let's, at least the next two weeks, probably. Probably on that one it might be a little longer. But the, for now, the closing of the public offices will be for the next two weeks. And, like, this changes daily. Yeah, it could. Yeah, they... they, uh, they or is it... Or can I say to say it changes hourly? By the time, commissioners, on Monday, I put out the 50 reduction by the presidential uh, press conference. That was already changed, so it was only really out by about an hour, hour and a half before that already changed on the CDC level and recommendations. Right. Okay. And that's why I think that this board authorized yourself and the others to make these decisions. Commissioners, have any questions? Well, and they are everybody. We are being kept updated. The sure, commissioners. Yeah. I mean, we're not we're not sitting in a vacuum as decisions are being made. We're we're being oh, notified no. when they're made. No. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't mean that. I no, didn't but mean I'm we, just saying that 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 we are being kept. We're in the loop. In yeah, in the loop of, the, loop of the decisions as they're being made. I I feel like the board is very supportive of what we're, is going on with our staff and what we're doing. We have one of the best. Teams, we do, in my opinion, in we, the state of Kansas, as far as making you. the decisions that are being made for us in so emergency preparedness. And for now, until the end of April, could I get a board action to authorize the cancellation of all public hearings? So moved. Second. second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on the cancellation of all public hearings till the end of April? Voting. Aye. 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 That's the one action item I had. I think Jamie probably has some things he'd like to discuss. Uh, commissioners, uh, it, as we just spoke about, the uh, presidential guidelines that came down supporting the CDC 
put out some additional guidelines in regards to uh, gatherings going from 50 down to 10, uh, dining uh, practices, best practices and such uh, in a uh, presidential coronavirus guidelines for America, the 15 day to slow the spread. Um, with that, the Kansas City Metro uh, has been evaluating that. Johnson County, uh, with the core four that you're aware of out of the Mark region, basically adopted that um, at effective yesterday. Uh, because of the close proximity of Leavenworth County um, and the cases that are uh, presenting themselves in Wyandotte County, Johnson County, on almost a daily basis now, um, we're kind of a day behind, so I would like to call ours kind of a 14-day uh, response to the slow of the spread and adopt those new CDC. And that's from myself, the health officer of Leavenworth County, moving forward uh, for at least the next 14 days, which will give us that uh, ability to uh, really look at where this is going, look at the caseload that's coming into the health department, look what we can handle, um, see where the testing is going in our state and such. Um, so on top of that, I uh, shared with uh, Commissioner Smith the emergency resolution out of emergency preparedness um, for uh, COVID-19 on public health emergency resolution uh, declaring Lenworth County uh, in a, a declaration of emergency in regards to where we're going with uh, this response. Um, so. Commissioner Smith does have a copy of that. All commissioners would have to read that. And if you would like, I can read it or you can read it. Um, but we would need to have that declaration from the board. Copy of it. If you can. You could go ahead and read it while they're passing this around and okay. we can vote on this. Whereas on the 17th day of March 2020, the Board of County Commissioners of Leavenworth County has declared there a state of local public health emergency in Leavenworth County, Kansas, resulting in a potential or occurring pandemic known as COVID-19 in Leavenworth County. Whereas such conditions endanger the public safety and welfare of persons within the borders of Leavenworth County. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Board of County Commissioners of Leavenworth, Kansas, the state of local public health emergency in Lenworth County has declared on the 17th day of March 2020 shall continue and remain in effect for the next uh, until 60 days unless terminated earlier. That the response and recovery aspects of all local disaster plans which are applicable to Lenworth County, Kansas shall initiate the rendering of aid and assistance thereunder. That any rights or powers lawfully exercised or any actions taken pursuant of local disaster emergency plans shall continue and have full force and effect as authorized by law for 60 days unless modified or terminated in the manner prescribed by law. Resolved by the Board of County Commissioners of Leavenworth County, Kansas, 17th day of March 2020. Commissioners have any questions on that? Anyone may make a motion on that? I just, I, I guess, a quick one, Jamie. Um, watching, you know, the news, which is unavoidable. Uh, <coughs> you know, it seems there are certain areas where the states are being far more progressive, and then you're seeing matters handled much more locally. Kind of curious how that, how or why that may occur, where you know certain counties are well, uh, and, taking and more sure, proactive approach than states. Probably aware um, that. The executive orders just came from our governor and such, giving kind of that minimum across the state. And again, as I, I referred, different areas are being hit at different levels. Obviously, the cases in the state of Kansas are, are predominantly here in the Kansas City metro. Um, you know, it, it's if we don't and are not proactive in this, it's too late. So taking those simple guidelines that have been since the very beginning of this of mitigation planning and strategic planning of social distancing, washing hands and everything else, this is really kind of forcing that social distancing because now we're starting to see communicable spread. So if we don't, um, as a jurisdiction, follow the same guidelines that our neighboring that have cases in, we're going to have those cases pop up. They're still coming. It's going to happen. We're going to have cases. But again, by mandating some of these and putting some of these <coughs> mitigation plans into play as guided from other areas that are hit harder and such, 
I think we're ahead of the curve than in a, a reactionary and response modality of are we going to be able to social distance everyone? No. Can we shut everything down? No, that's not what the president's saying. That's not what everyone. But if we can give some avenue in here to have stay at home, social distance, certain things are shut down, and we're limiting some of these exposures, we're trying to reduce that spike, if you will, in the mass numbers of individuals that become ill all at the same time. That's what we cannot, we can't, we can't take that. As I spoke before with department heads and, and, and others, you can look at Italy, for example, and some of the those spikes in numbers, they, they saturated their ability in the healthcare system, and that's what we're trying to do nationwide, is remain within the numbers that we can have healthcare still providing for, not just this illness, the illnesses that are still nationwide happening. We can't influx and inundate all of our hospitals with coronavirus all at once. And if we just sit back and let this occur, that's what's going to happen. So we've already been able to see some of the social distancing factors obviously have gained some time for us and have started spreading that out. This, again, by following the guidelines from CDC, what is it's allowing us to have some of that time. Again, I canceled schools last week. By the weekend happened, came from the governor's office. Cancel schools. Let's get that time frame in there. We're just ahead of the curve. I want to be ahead of the curve. I'm a day behind on this one, if we really want to look at it. The other two, uh, the other four counties, if you will, um, and now just as of uh, this morning, Platt County has also uh, jumped into having the, the social distancing and things of TAN and, and, and dining facilities and such are being shut down. I think it's just helping us because, again, we're, we're more of a metropolitan look than we are in, in some of the others, and this is what we need to do. And is there a, I'm sure there's been discussion, but I'm kind of curious. I mean, given our health care resources are substantially less than our neighboring core four, you know, what that would look like. Uh, As most would say, I guess, when the need arises, not if the need arises, but when the need arises, our ability to support looks very different than theirs. We are, by, by doing... Um, if I'm, if I'm hearing kind of what we are part of, um, again, the Kansas City Metro, and, and again, with, with this declaration and being part, it will allow for resources to be uh, called upon. We're going to be ready. Um, there are some things that we've already done in the background to get additional resources coming um, in preparation for our response when, uh, when the cases come. I'm not even going to say if, it's when the cases come. A question for you. Um, what are your recommendations going to be in regards to uh, restaurants and bars, and what will your recommendations be in relation to church congregational meetings? We have already, um, I'll, I'll hit the church congregation. The clergy piece, we have already reached out on every step of the way, um, all the way from the diocese, all the way through um, Lebanon County's clergy association in regards to um, how these pieces are working. Most of those have already adopted their own planning process for um, virtual church, uh, online churches, things of that nature. Uh, this last weekend, uh, many services uh, canceled off, some reduced. Others um, had church services, but they had augmented uh, communions and things of that nature to social distance. Uh, no refreshment stands trying to uh, prepare for this. We've been in contact uh, as information from CDC and guidance has come down. We have pushed out for this. Uh, now with the 10, it's going to obviously, uh, we're going to ask that church services continue to look at strategies and, and mitigation plans to reduce that because, again, church services have a lot of vulnerable people that are, are attending those services and showing up on the weekend. And that is exactly what I am here to try to do for Leavenworth County, is protect those that can't protect themselves, either by, by slowing down the mitigation strategies of individuals that can't protect themselves. So uh, that's kind of on the, on the uh, religious side of things. On the restaurants, it was already pretty well, um, I think, avoid eating and drinking in bars, restaurants, and food courts, uh, drive-thrus, pickups, and delivery options. 
I'm going to look at what the entire um, Kansas City Metro has basically been adopting and in, in not, uh, not stray, if you will, from um, what that looks like. Because, again, uh, we're looking at best, best practices. We're looking at how, how, do we, um, how do we mitigate gatherings. And, that, and a gathering, it, it, we can sit and argue all day long, well, if it's 11 people or 12 people, it doesn't matter. Again, what I am trying to do is, is push some reduction and make it so people understand that social distancing is what is going to slow this virus down. And it's not that we're going to stop people from becoming ill. What we are really trying to do is protect people so when they are ill, they have health care to seek. And, and we still have people that, that don't believe in quarantine. They don't believe in those orders. They're going to do their own thing. Uh, they're not staying home when they're sick. And, and we see that on, on, on any virus or any illness that's out there. The problem with this is there are no immunities. There are no abilities for people to protect themselves. So even if there was someone in this room right now that was sick, we are all exposed. The potential mm -hmm. for being exposed is here because we're here today. And that's exactly what Mark and myself and everyone that is trying to, in the public health world, try to protect. Those that can't protect themselves, whether you believe it or not, in, 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 is this as bad as it's going to be or it's not, can't err on, on well, well, we'll just have to wait and see. If we wait and see, it's too late. What we know is we can look at internationally what has already occurred and, and and things that have transpired just in the last three months with this illness. And that's what we have to go off of on making some of these decisions. And I'm not making these recommendations from Jamie Miller, just here I am. These are, these are from experts in epidemiology. These are from infectious disease doctors that are saying these are things. You're going to have people all over the spectrum giving different guidance and, and such. What I have to look at is what is nationwide the public health stance on this and, and what we have is all the way from CDC the President of the United States coming down saying this is what we what we'd like to do right now and this is in the best interest of everyone coming from those individuals that are the experts so again for me to, to not come forward for this county and try to protect this county's population quite frankly would be against what I am as a health officer for Loveland County thank you Jamie thank you I did have I have one question and it came from uh, Commissioner Wilson with the city of Leavenworth and and I brought it to you but the homeless population <clears throat> we are we're, we are working with um, sister Vicki and okay. the homeless population to, to try to figure out um, why not county is trying to we are all working through that process. okay I just um, if, if the individual is truly sick enough to be admitted into a hospital, they're going to be admitted into the hospital. The problem lies is when they have that fever, they need to be in that quarantine, and we're trying to work through what that solution 100% is going to be. Um, there are some guidance that are out there, but nothing definitive. It really it, it falls upon amongst the uh, the local level. Too. So we're working with emergency management. We're working with um, Sister Vicki in our health department are all trying to work together to come up with that what that plan really looks like okay good i just know that he's here today so i wanted to kind of <laughs> mr miller are you going to need additional staff on this um as of right now um i can i can tell you again the health department has with shutting down some of the um daily services, if you will, uh, the walk-in style services. We're still keeping appointment style services out there. Uh, we've been able to redirect a few of the, the staff out there. Every member within the health department has a certain percentage of their job description that is public health emergency preparedness. So they all, we all plan for uh, tornadoes, floods, um, mm -hmm. biological, all of those type of things. We have been able to do that. With this declaration, this will start to move us into an EOC uh, environment as well. Uh, so Chuck's office has been involved. Uh, Kim has been actually out in my office. We've kind of set her up out there to assist up to this point. And, and as this is growing and getting bigger and more cases and, and such start coming forward, uh, we will grow with that. OK. 
Okay. So we will have limited seating at our <coughs> regular meetings. We won't allow public access to the regular meetings. It'll okay. be virtual only. <coughs> okay. Well, the time. All right. And is that? Are we setting a uh, time frame on that to start out with? It's fourteen days for right now. Fourteen days. For right <coughs> yeah. Now. Excuse me. Okay. And what about employees uh, who have been traveling? We'll address that on the personnel side. Okay. We have the authority for that. Okay. All right. Any other questions? I'll need a motion on that, the resolution here. Motion to approve the, the COVID-19 public health emergency resolution. Second. You have the number for that. Can you put the number in your motion? What, what is, it? is it? Ten. 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 Number ten. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Voting? I, I did have something to say. All right. I think, and this is just for, I I think that all of this commission is, is willing to take these steps because we're being instructed to by, basically by the federal government and then all the professionals, all the healthcare professionals and everyone. But I do think it should be put on the record to the public that we are aware that this is causing enormous economic distress to our citizens and to our businesses in Leavenworth County. And we're very concerned with that as well. Where obviously the public health comes first, but destroying our economy has to be something that we're concerned with too. And uh, this can go on for two weeks, but I think Beyond that, it's going to be very serious for our economy. Mm -hmm. Jamie, uh, how does it how does it work between what you know the counties are communicating? And again, I'm going off of all the different emails and notifications right. I've gotten from the core four chambers. Go on, so on and so forth. And then you've got you know the state's <coughs> position and recommendations. And I can tell you right now, they don't correlate. So, uh, again, if, if going back to just, you know, the CDC recommendations and, you know, best practices and social distancing and, you know, reducing public gatherings and making sure you have a minimum head count, I mean, again, how's that, you know, again, because Johnson County was just told something different than Laura Kelly just advised. Right. So yeah. I'm kind of curious, like, again, if you know a, a business owner, they're going to have questions regardless of what industry they're the in. The Kansas so. City Metro, again, has stood up its EICS, which is, is – through the whole entire market, the healthcare coalition, um, we're all trying to stay. So, take down the the uh, state, you know, division, if you will, and it's the entire mark region is also looking at what we look like I, again. Where are the cases right now, realistically, in the state of Kansas? Well, they're they're in the Kansas City metro. So, our response is going to look different than. Our western counterparts and what sure. you know mm -hmm. does, does schools in Johnson County, Wyandotte County. Um, quite frankly, I was on a phone call this morning. Uh, in Wyandotte County, the schools are going to be closed down all the way until April sixth. So um, there are some things right now that are being pushed out within the Kansas City Metro, and, and we're trying to push out that same. So when press releases come out, those voices are all trying to come together and all be on the same page. Um, because we are reacting to also the best guidance and best practice, but also the best guidance and best practice for our populations and, and, and the density of our populations first. Again, some Western counterparts that there may be a, a complete population of 200, 1,000 maybe only right. in the entire county. Uh, that's, mm -hmm. that's a completely different thought process when you're trying to protect, um, you know, 80,000 plus people. Right. Um, or more as you as you move into Johnson County and Wyandotte counties and such. So um, it is difficult. There are, there are a lot of um, experts in the room when, when you are talking and you're trying to get that guidance. It's the same. Uh, we're going to be looked at a little different because, again, we're part of that metro. No, uh, at the current time, but I haven't been back to the office. I don't have a, 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 an active case in Leavenworth County right now. We would put that out if we did. Um, but again, they're in our back door. If you look at the corridor on how our population, there's a large population of Leavenworth County residents that work in Johnson County. 
There's a large population that work in Wyandotte County. There's a large population that work in the Kansas City metro that are coming back to our uh, our <laughs> homes here within Leavenworth County that has the exposure factor that we're trying to play with all of our players within the, the Kansas City metro and stay on that same sheet of music. So to answer your question, we are trying to keep that message the same. But again, you have to, we have to look at, I understand what the state's position is, obviously, across... And again, if you look at it as a statewide, we're very low in, in nationwide on the amount of cases that we, we actually have. But I also know what's on my caseload of things that we're watching in, in, in Wyandotte County's watching and Johnson County's watching and the public health sector of the potential of what could happen very quickly as opposed to what would happen out in western Kansas. So again, our response is going to be more metro driven than it's going to be just the Kansas State driven because we have to err on the side of what can happen very quickly here. And so the local recommendations and guidelines again given the proximity but again we're following our stringent guidelines that we're following are, are still cdc guidelines sure. and not doing anything beyond because those guidelines are coming from areas that have the same recommendations and or the same caseload right that think we may be seeing and it's from best case so we're getting some of that information from areas that have been hit very hard and we're trying to stay ahead of the curve and we're, we're getting lessons learned from those areas that say well if we would have done this Mm-hmm. Then we may have avoided that. That's the key. Thank where you. You're at. Jamie and I were just talking before the meeting, and a couple of the commissioners. The the guidelines that came down from the state, the governor has to look at statewide what's what they're doing. So they set the minimum standards. It's kind of like when we adopt a policy and in, in, internally, we adopt the minimum standards for what everybody has to follow. Certain departments may need more stringent guidelines, like. Um, I mean, there, we have several of those instances where one department may have to have a little bit more stringent guidelines on how you take leave or who can be gone at what times versus countywide. So we adopt the minimum standards, and then we leave it to the local departments mm -hmm. to implement the standards they need to make sure they're successful. The same thing is happening at the state and federal level. They're, they're setting the minimum guidelines, and the state came in and said, these are the minimum guidelines you should follow because the governor has to look at the entire state. So minimum. Locally, we have to look at that. Jamie's authority in our county is not superseded by anyone else's. Jamie is the county health officer, sets the standards for Leavenworth County. Well, I just, uh, so I'll, um, and maybe this is a bad example because it's schools and all schools have basically been suspended. But, you know, you could have a debate club, and let's say the debate club in Lansing has six kids in it, and the debate club in Johnson County has 55. Well, it would be understanding why the debate club in Johnson County was shut down, but do you need to shut down the debate club when there's six? Again, those are those are things that I think are real-world applications. Different size businesses see different yes. volumes of people, and just how do we answer those questions if you're in Leavenworth versus Wyandotte versus Johnson County versus whatever the governor okay. might release? So, agree. So, I, I again, I don't, I didn't know if localized is is more likely the you know, safer recommendation rather than maybe that of the states, or do you pick the one that's worst for you? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I realize it's not black and white, but if right. you're if you're sticking to those CDC guidelines of minimum distance of six feet, you know, no more than ten people, whatever those might be, is the rest of this just words on a page? I, I'm I'm just trying to get a feel for. It. Mm -hmm. Because if well, you're like under said, 10 right, and, you got social, and you get the social distancing, that sounds very different than some of the things that have been written. Uh, again, we're working with our counterparts that are... Uh, I have to look at our our county, our situation sure. as to... Um, again, when, when we closed schools, uh, that was in concert with all the superintendents. I had all superintendents in the room. Um, I had... Um, as, as we're moving forward, uh, we are having those conversations with city administrators, um, you know, city managers. All of we're having those in the room. We're having some of those conversations with, um, and, and again, some of that support is is also coming from them saying, "We want to protect you. You you tell us what's on the horizon, what's happening in our area." Um, and as we are are exploring through that. Uh, 
again, we are so close to the Kansas City Metro. I, I can see how things are spreading. I can see where things are, are kind of popping up. Um, I want to be ahead of the curve. Sure. And, and that, I think, is where those decisions are coming from. Um, I don't think any of our decisions yet ha has been, uh, well, Leavenworth County is just doing, I, I think maybe I pulled the trigger uh, a little sooner than others did in school closings. Um, but again, by Sunday, that was that was what was across the state, exactly what we did on Wednesday. So um, some of those decision processes were already being in, in, in the works, if you will, uh, in, in the Kansas City Metro and everything else for, and, and sometimes it's just, you, you, you've got to make that determination for what's in the best interest, I think, for, um, you know, our home. Sure. This is our home and this is our people. And, and again, I completely understand uh, your concerns, Commissioner. Uh, these decisions that I am making are not easy. Um, you know, I, I'm working 16 hour days, and, and these are uh, trying to stay abreast of this and trying to um, keep our county safe it is a. a large undertaking and um, I hope I have your support in regards to the decisions that we're making because that is not um, my intent to shut down the economy, shut down our, our, our community and such, but I've been tasked to make um, our, our community safe and that's what I'm trying to do and protect it. Any other question, Mr. Miller, on this resolution? In voting? Aye. 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 And with that being said, Thank I you, mean, Jamie. Yeah, appreciate all that you're doing. I mean, yes. you, your team, you know, those exactly. questions are <clears throat> ones that we have been getting and will continue to get. And it's just, uh, it's hard to have an answer when, again, an adjacent county may say one thing, the state may say again, something if else. Any of the commissioners have questions. I, I am available. I will make myself available to answer. Please email me, call me, get with. Uh, Just remember that he is working 16 hours a day on other things right now. Mm -hmm. but happy to share information as we can. Right. But if, you're, if, you, if, if you feel I'm not mm -hmm. getting you the information you need, please reach out. We will get you that information. Whether it comes from me or someone else, that information will come to you. We have even stood up um, a joint information center uh, right. of, of trying right. to. Mm -hmm. Um, get all that information to one point and be able to, to feed that out. So in the in the future weeks, I think more information will start to come out. Um, again, we're growing with the situation and trying to get that out. And, and again, we, by the time you draft a response to something, right. yeah, it's, it's outdated. outdated. Yeah, that joint information yeah. center thing that has been put together yeah, and sounds I, pretty cool. Let's say thanks to those who are helping with that, especially. Um, Chief uh, Farley with Fire District you, One. He's really yes. awesome. I was going to say. Really awesome. So I was at their meeting last night. And he he uh, commended you, your your team. Um, obviously, everybody here in the community that's been on the uh, front lines. And so he couldn't say enough great things about you. And I know that um, has been reciprocated about him as well. So yeah, and if, thank if, you again. And I know Jamie's offered himself to you, but I would really suggest if you do have questions, go, bring them to me. I might be able to answer them because Jamie and I are in contact nonstop throughout the day. If I can't, I'll go directly to Jamie just to kind of save him a few phone calls. If you all would take that into consideration, I'd appreciate it. And we need a common sense resolution. I've been doing that. Also, yes, you have. we've been working on that. For a while. <laughs> We've been working on a common sense resolution. <laughs> but with that being said, I mean it's it's a fact that there was a lot of people on vacation last week that traveled with the, a lot of the school district for spring break. So I think you will see a spike. Uh, but I think a lot of them were also this week, which was good that yeah. we got ahead of that. And most There's, travel has been canceled. And yeah, so three of the school districts were out last week. Two are out this week in Leavenworth County. So um, that's kind of what you're getting at is the, the ones who traveled last week really left before a lot of this came out and before a lot of the travel mm -hmm. bans. So they were out and about and maybe in areas or on cruise ships, and now they've come back to the county. And we really are still within that 14-day window where anything they brought back with them might blossom. So that's why we're a little concerned. I think it will blossom. This week's, the school districts, obviously, who are on spring break, that happened after we knew what was going on. So probably a lot of those folks canceled their travel. Um, so that helps. But, you know, you still have people traveling, and you still have people going to areas where 
they've said you should avoid. Uh, you can't. That's the common sense that's thing. Common you, sense you can't. Do, you know, you can't legislate common sense. Unfortunately, hard to get six feet of separation and under ten on an airplane. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. It's true. But and the last time I checked, you can't. It's pretty tough to swim to Hawaii. Yeah. So. Dang it. Well, we are, we definitely all need to support. Yes, our local I'm businesses, thinking. whether it's through gift cards, drive-through, whatever we can do to support our local business. Now's the time to stay local. Stay, stay close to home. Support. Don't forget supporting our churches. Don't forget about our nonprofits. They still need your help to get through this. They've got bills to pay. Yeah. but More than ever, they need the help. Right. Yeah, order to go so that people are staying in business. You know, and for your entertainment money, you can buy gift cards and give and them yeah, out. give out gift cards like, for people to well, use. There are plenty of restaurants and, restaurants and bars and you know uh, retailers like that that have been hurt by you know the tournaments. They've now been hurt by the oh. holiday. They're going to continue to be hurt by these restrictions. And I think it's the the really tough part for most of them is we don't have some of the same. Uh, um, Resources that you have in a Johnson County. So unless people know more than I do about Uber Eats and all the Grubhub and all these other services, I mean those traditionally they're not offered, and if they are, they're very limited here. So well, no, there's um, there's lots of it here, yeah. but it's just expensive. Well, I mean, just again, it's a frequency thing. It's no different than using Uber. Well, it's going to look very different if you're probably not in Leavenworth versus if you're going to be searching for bargains downtown Kansas City. So, yep. So, like I said, I just really hope people stay local, buy local, and we'll. We'll get through this. And can we request that we limit the amount of toilet paper we buy? <laughs> no. Okay. We don't have no control over that. Is there anything I think else? the resolution gives you and your team and staff, obviously, all the uh, decision-making authority you need. But if there's something more we can or should be doing, please let us know and keep up the great work. So. Yep. Thank you. We really do appreciate it, Jamie. Appreciate and, and you and your guys staff and everything all of you. you've done. And, and, you know, I think one thing to remember is I have a friend that works in the health care over in Johnson County, and there are people in the hospital right now that we should remember in our thoughts and prayers. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. They have this, and it is very serious. Okay. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, Jamie. Hilltop Market in Easton is giving out a free roll of toilet paper with $30 purchase. <laughs> Just thought I'd throw that out there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You might have just closed them down. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. <laughs> uh, anything else, Mr. Lawfrey? That's all for this meeting. A motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Voting. Aye. Aye. Aye, aye, aye.